Welcome to Cannabis Investing Newsletter. I'm D.H. Taylor. Today, I want to talk about Halo Collective. I can think of no other stock that I get more questions about than Halo Collective. And I'm not so sure that these are warranted as much. A lot of individuals may have gotten involved in this stock because of some hype that comes out of maybe European countries and things like this. The fact is, Halo Collective has a tremendous amount of upside over a long period of time. During the shorter period, we've been guided that they're going to print about $70 million over this year. So far, we're on track for that. But individuals are getting frustrated. Right now, the stock has been moving lower, although it has been up the past two days, simply because there, there's a capital raise going on in ATM. This has caused some consternation. But I want to stress that building a business is not an event. It is a process. Getting involved in ownership of that company is not an event. It is a process. Continually, we need to focus on what the company is doing. This is a company that has a tremendous amount of upside potential when you look at what they're doing. It's not going to happen all at one time. But over the course of many years, say two and a half to five to seven and a half to ten years, this is a company that will produce a tremendous amount of revenue if you were to look at what they could do. Given that, a penny here, a penny there, I'm getting questions about what I think the stock price will be by the end of this month. These aren't things that I focus on. With Cannabis Investing Newsletter, as a long-term value investor, I'm looking two and a half, five, seven and a half, ten years down the road. I'm looking 25 years down the road. I'm not looking 25 days down the road. These aren't things that I would consider being valuable to an investment. If you looked at the bigger picture, if you looked at what could happen with Halo Collective, you wouldn't care about August either. What you'd care about is, are they on track? We're on the cusp of a new earnings release, and I think it's just about two or three weeks out. Given this, we should see a significant increase in revenue this quarter based on what they produced last quarter. From that, we'll be reiterated that Halo Collective is on track. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. I can paint a picture that looks really good, but it's not going to happen overnight. Take a look at Amazon.com. You could have bought this stock for a couple bucks back in 1998. You'd be doing pretty well right about now, had you. But that's 23 years in the making. Halo Collective is no different in that it's going to take some time. So I wanted to break down what the potential could be so that individuals who may have gotten involved in this not really understanding all of what Halo Co Collective could do can now understand that this is a stock with a lot of potential upside. Let's jump into the computer. I'll show you what I'm talking about. First up, three things. First time stopping by the uh, website and the channel. I want to say thanks for stopping by. I launched this about five months ago and I'm growing quite rapidly. I had a bit of a history uh, from some of the other publications that I would write with but nonetheless a bunch of you sought me out and my channel is growing I can't say thanks enough I'm a value investor I've been involved in the markets for some 32 years or so I only look at stocks right now from a value perspective I'm not looking for the hit and quit what's this stock going to do by the end of the month that's not my thing I'm looking at what the stocks could do many, many years down the road. I'm trying to put a little bit of money to work over the course of the next, say, 10, 15, 25 years. And I don't really want to be looking at these stocks over and over and over again, but I will because that's a diligence that I will impart. A bunch of you have learned a lot about value investing from my videos. I get comments all the time. I get emails. People basically just saying, thank you. No one else out on YouTube is doing anything like this. And I get that. But it's far more technical. A lot of those guys are just kind of looking for clickbait, see if they can run their YouTube channels up as much as they can. Not my thing. I'm doing this for my own 
investing. So if this is your first stop by, uh, I do welcome you to try and look at the email I send out. I try and send out about four emails a week. Uh, unfortunately, I'm running a little behind this week. My hard drive, my internal hard drive on my laptop just died on Sunday. I'm having a tough time coming into terms with this because I just installed it in December. I didn't even get six months out of the thing. So it's been a, an emotional thing for me. Um, again, Halo Collective, long-term potential. They have two main things. They've got about three main things that they're putting together. Yeah, maybe four. But we've got Africa, Bofello. All right. This is a 495-acre potential. You can put a lot of plants on an acre, about 1,500 plants. Those 1,500 plants can yield up to about 400 grams. If you're really good, I've seen some information where people can say they can squeeze out 1,000 grams per plant. I tried to take a moderate look at this. Because 495 acres is a lot of land and would take a lot of intensive farming. So given that, I'm putting together a revenue project, uh, projection so you can sit there and ask this question, how much can this potential actually be? Another thing they're doing, they've got a um, Bar X, which is a ranch they picked up. This is a potential 60 acres of very high quality cannabis it's an outdoor growth they're uh they've got facilities and all sorts of things going on there this is another big chunk and they're just coming online a little delayed it is a global pandemic after all and sometimes i get frustrated with that because i don't have too much in the way of on my personal basis i don't get too much in the way of uh, seeing things that are really lagging but then again you do you, you we We've opened up down here in New Mexico again, and I can freely walk in and out of the um, stores as I want, but I still wear a mask. Uh, just recently started putting it back on. I just, I don't want to be part of that. Uh, it's just me. I already know how I'll respond to the virus because I had it. Um, another thing that Halo Collective is putting together, dispensaries. Picked up a couple of dispensaries up in, Cal uh, up in Canada. They have a few dispensaries in California. This is something that I expect a lot of focus on moving forward on a gradual, continual basis. So although they are going to be printing some revenue coming out of these, this is just a foundation and a starting point. I'm becoming of mind that if you don't have dispensaries, you're kind of not in business because we are in the beginning stages. I'm looking at small companies that are carving out a small niche and maybe they're putting together some premium stuff, but you're also getting these bigger players who are accumulating dispensaries. How do these smaller niche companies compete? Because what will happen is those bigger players will start squeezing them out and then they'll turn to them and say, why don't you sell yourself to us? It's a game. And these small players are going to get hit. You've got to get involved in the dispensary business. Halo is getting involved in the dispensary business. And I think that's a big positive. Some fundamentals on the company. H -can, uh, H -T -A -N -F symbol. You probably know that one. Here in the United States. Uh, Halo up in uh, Canada, I think is their symbol. Um, last I checked... I think it hit about three cents. I had a huge buy order in at two cents, but it bounced to four. They've been doing an ATM, uh, selling, I think they're raising about 20 million Canadian or something like that. So there aren't many people out there rushing in to buy this stock. Yet the, gov uh, the company is trying to raise capital and it's 20 or 30 million. I can't really remember off the top of my head. It's not really that important. Understand this, there are not a lot of people lining up to buy this stock right now. The company just issued a bunch of stock trying to raise capital. It, I think it was trading about five, between seven and a half and five cents, and they're trying to raise a pretty decent chunk. So you've got to sell a lot of shares. 
which of course pushed it down. I'm not certain where they are uh, with raising that capital. Uh, nonetheless, there's enough cash on hand, and I'm going to show you some a couple quick charts. There's enough cash on hand. They should be able to push forward for about two years' time or so, maybe a year and a half or something like that. Not certain. Don't know what they're going to be doing with regards to um, how they could potentially um, expand and if that will require more cash. Market cap $75 million off of... Uh, the U.S. exchange, I've seen some other numbers in some of the other areas. Um, I looked at MarketWatch and they had their market cap at $1.7 million, which I was like, wait, what? I didn't think that that was accurate. I looked around at some other places and I found $75 million at the current price of about $0.04. Cents. There's about 2 billion shares outstanding. I've seen two numbers on this, $2.1 billion and $1.96 billion. We're going to call it two billion. It's a nice rough estimate. Um, I have previously talked about weighted average with shares outstanding, and I actually expressed that. And yet, someone had the audacity to say you got your shares wrong. I use the MDNA. I'm using the MDNA in this analysis. I only use the MDNA. I don't really go out into the internet and ask what the other individuals are talking about. Management knows what management is doing. They're a pretty good resource. In one of my videos, I used the weighted average at the time because I knew they were issuing a bunch more stock. That was all the information that management had given me at that time. So someone said I had to uh, redo my video because I made a mistake. I think the mistake was on you, sir. So on my website, uh, a very popular page that I have is um, I compare about a hundred different companies. Now I've got about 135 different stocks up on the site. I've got about another 200 stocks that I don't know what's happening with them. They're not really printing well. It's difficult for me to get information, this, that, the other thing. They're not on my site. But I've got the most active 100 stocks. Then that extra 35, they're not quite printing revenue yet. So until they really get the ball rolling, I didn't, I'm didn't. i not really putting a lot of effort into them. I don't like to project into the future too much of what a stock could be doing based on their plan. I've got 350 companies. All 350 companies have a plan. So I'm not too interested in one particular company's plan because they all grow cannabis or produce cannabis or sell cannabis. That's their plan. So when someone turns to me and says, yeah, but you need to look forward at their plan. I'm looking at 350 different plans. When you have the ability to look at so many different companies, you're able to look at that and say, it's just another company. How will they outpace based on metrics? How, how do people like their cannabis? It helps you get cut through that hype because some individuals, they don't have the time that I have. So they get married to this one concept. And when I turn to them and say, that's really not that great of a company. Boy, do they get offended. I get that. So given that on this page, I've got um, about 100 companies. Halo Collective is actually ranked number 10 in uh, revenue growth rate at 96%. Uh, they had a, I think it was 5.5 million. We're going to look at the revenue. I think it was about 5.5 million and then they printed 9.9 .9 million last quarter. They are telling us they're going to do 70 million. So they need to do 20 million over the next three quarters on average to hit that 70 million. So I expect this next quarter to be exceptional with a high revenue growth rate. Um, and I'm not certain what projections are. Maybe they hit 15 million this, uh, this quarter coming up. Uh, again, they need 20 million per quarter on average. Don't be targeting 20 million. I think they might hit say 12 to 15. Then that fourth quarter, they'll make up. It's just, it's, it's a process. It's just a process. It's a process. Just keep telling yourself that one thing. And when you look at the numbers, you'll see they're putting it together. Unfortunately for Halo Collective, the revenue growth rate is about the only thing they rank nicely on. 
It's a process. They are in the process of putting everything together. There have been delays that has caused frustration and consternation. I totally get that. Given that revenue per share, they've got 2 billion shares. The revenue of 10 million gets them to about a half a penny. So this puts them pretty low. Um, gross margins. What's going to happen with gross margins is simply this. Let's say you've got 100,000 uh, square foot facility that you're renting. All right. But you're pushing through, say, $100,000 or a million dollars worth of product through there. But you're only working at, say, 10% capacity. If that 1 million were to turn to 10 million, now all of a sudden that facility is the, the, the fees for the rent is being paid via $10 million worth of revenue versus that $1 million. So when you look at this, the 19.2%, their gross margins are going to increase significantly over the course of time. It will continually improve because they have so much potential long term but they're not going to be producing 100% of the potentiality right now. This is something that you, I think, need to really grasp and sit there and say, it's a process. Operating efficiencies, once again, this is based on revenue. As revenues increase, so will their, um, their metric. You want the lowest possible number here versus gross margins. You want the highest possible numbers. For gross margins, some of the sweet spots I've been seeing, 60 to 65%. Operating efficiencies, I've seen in the 20%, but 30 to 35%, you're sort of right in that sweet spot. If you can continue forward and start hitting 20, 25%, 25 to 30%, you're really knocking it out of the park. Hey, local active visit company, because of their their they're currently paying on such huge acreage, although it's low cost. Um, as their revenues continue to increase, this metric here is something I expect will be outstanding. But it's a process. It's not going to happen all today. EBITDA per revenue, they are not EBITDA profitable. Therefore, their numbers are not exactly exemplary. Debt to asset ratio, this will change. Um, they're in the middle of a cash raise. raise. Uh, nonetheless, they're in a decent spot with their cash raise. One of the downsides to a cash raise is you do that by issuing more stock. That's dilution. Um, but your debt to asset ratio improves. I'd rather not have the dilution factor. Um, where they are currently is a solid position. I think they're going to have plenty of cash for some time and will be able to operate efficiently uh, without any real constraints and then also I think that they're going to the numbers are going to add up in such a way that they're not really going to have to raise any more cash from what I can tell right now but they're going to continually expand their goal for this year of course was 70 million with um, EBITDA profitability I want to real quickly go through these revenue pictures. I've looked at them before. You're certainly welcome to look at them again. I'll put links for these particular um, uh, uh, videos up. 9.9 .9 was a record. Again, I think we're probably going to hit 12 and a half to 15 million this quarter. Then maybe 20 the quarter after that, maybe 22 to 25 to 27 the quarter after that. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. They told us two things, 70 million in revenue, a bit to profitability. These are the things that I'm going to be looking at. Net income, of course, has been uh, negative. Um, I didn't put a bit to profitability up there because it, they, they're fairly mirror-esque in this sense. Um, I wanted to show the $9 million net income loss simply because I think they were sitting on about $30 million in cash and they just raised about another $20 million U.S. So you're looking at about $50 million, so they have plenty. And I do expect that this particular metric will get chopped down significantly because they're going to be bringing in more revenue that's going to trickle through to the profits down below. So I'm expecting net income to get really close to zero EBITDA profitability will be at least break even. They may even cross over. 
two things I want to look at. Bar X Ranch, Bofello, and the dispensaries. Bar X Ranch, this is premium grow area. And I've read some articles on this. I've kind of looked at some of the press releases. What can happen? This is 60 acres of planned grow. All right. You can expect 250 to 400,000 pounds of canvas. The projections that management has put out, they're looking at 1,800 to 2,200 per pound. So um, I actually kind of thought that was a little high. There's a lot of players entering California. It may be that we see the moderate end of their projections as the high end. I tried to impart uh, some modesty in that. Um, this number tends to be a moving target. It has been trending upwards, but Oregon certainly has had its issues with cannabis prices. There was a huge glut a couple years ago. This plummeted Oregon prices and it, you know, the economics of cannabis, basically. Nonetheless, um, you're looking at the potential of about 500 million in revenue. All right. If we hit, say, 250 pounds of can, a uh, thousand pounds of cannabis at two thousand dollars, it's half a million dollars in revenue. That's huge. And this is one of the things that I wanted to point out. They own Barex. All right, they're moving forward with this. There have been delays, totally understandable. But they're moving forward and we're going to start seeing this produce. I think next year, 2022, you'll really start to see this come to fruition. And this is when you're really going to be able to see the plan is working. But again, we were told $70 million this year. They're on track for that. As far as we can tell, we're going to get more information in just a couple of weeks. Once we get that more information, we're going to sit there and say they're on plan. Then we can turn to this in their uh, investor presentation and ask the question, OK, you hit this year. What's the future? What what could possibly look at? And that's why I wanted to really kind of bring this in, because they're looking at 250,000 to 400,000 people pounds of cannabis depending on which article you read and again i'm i'm kind of taking the low end 250,000 cuz i've i have read more than one article from them in press releases so i've taken the modest look to $2000 per pound that seems to be a bit on the high end for even my uh analysis i tend to push lower on that nonetheless you're looking at 500 million in revenue from this but it's not going to happen overnight it's a process it's a process you are now part owner of a company that has that much revenue potential from one facility they just printed 9.9 .9 million this bar x ranch's potential is 500 million Bofello Biosciences. If you go to their website, they'll tell you that they've got about 550 or so, 575, I can't remember what the number is. I don't read off of script. So I try not to, I try to, you know, when I'm saying numbers, I don't have a script here. And somebody will call them out, uh, you said 495, it's actually 496. I've actually gotten comments like that. I don't have a script. I've got 350 companies I'm looking at. So, uh, I think it's about 550 to 575 is their total grow potential acreage. Um, and I kind of broke down with Bofello um, what each one is. And I put this on my article. So there's a, a corresponding article and I get a little more detailed where I actually put these numbers in. Um, the belief is, so two things. First off, they have a contract to sell 10,000 kilos of cannabis for $3 per gram. All right. So for those Americans who have no idea what a, uh, what a kilo is and the conversion rate and all those things, they tried back in the, I think it was Jimmy Carter tried to switch us over to the um, uh, metric system. And 
it just sort of faded away. If you guys don't bring it up, I won't bring it up either. Um, that 10,000 kilos at three, uh, $3 is going to be about $30 million in revenue. We're going to see some of that right now over the next couple quarters. Most of it, based on the information I read from the press release, is for next year. So I don't expect a tremendous amount out of Bofello just yet. But they've got 495 acres of planned grow. Go to the website. On average, outdoor grow, mind you, nearly 500 acres. I've asked around and I said 400. Does that sound, sound about right? Grams per plant. You can get about 1,500 plants in an acre. An outdoor grow, I've had people say, well, you can hit 1,000, but boy, you need to be a rocket scientist. You can hit lower too. So I tried to come up with a number that seemed about right for a facility so large. Now, the nice thing is uh, labor is inexpensive down in uh, Lesotho. Uh, no one can doubt that one. So given a 400 gram average um, per plant at the current rate that they're selling these 10,000 kilograms uh, for 30 million, with 1,500 plants per acre, and I have seen numbers a little higher than that. I don't know why you'd want to stress the ground and try and really push it because this is a lot. I think what you probably could do is sit there and say, if we plant one plant, can we get 500 grams on average out? Should be the goal, not planting more plants. Do your math. That's $900 million in revenue potential. And I got guys asking me what I think the stock price is going to be at the end of August. Bar X was another half million. That's $1.4 billion in revenue potential. Start looking at the far bigger picture. Who cares where the stock price is going to be at the end of August? Because this is a company that's off of two facilities alone can print $1.4 in potential. They're probably going to push their California, Oregon uh, operations and those, their canopy area and everything they're putting together could probably exceed that $500 million. They will continue to expand. But for right now, they have two facilities, two areas that they can produce that have a lot of upside potential. So they don't really need to expand too much with that. They're good there. But the dispensaries, and I put something simple for the dispensaries together. They basically have two, uh, they have the California dispensaries and then they've got the Kush bars up in uh, uh, Canada, which they picked up off of um, High Tide. When High Tide and Meta merged, I think there was some overlap. And so Halo Collective stepped in and said, we will take those, um, convert them into Kush Bar. I'm not exactly sure on how that all went down. Nonetheless, they now have dispensary systems up in California, uh, California and also in Canada. You can expect that this will continue to grow. When these business models start proving to be viable and we hit a bit of profitability, we start exceeding that, start... And the company starts bringing in net earnings and can start working with that. Expect more dispensaries. I think we're looking at about 35 to $45 million in revenue real quickly from the current dispensary system. Now, when they flip the Kush bars and everything, I'm not exactly sure. You know, it might have been a Meta, uh, Meta or High Tide dispensary at one point now all of a sudden it's not new labeling new products new this new that do the same customers instantaneously show up and say good enough we'll just buy what you got or do they need to create new uh, a new connection with a new customer base not exactly sure how that's going to play out even if there's a little bit of roughness there long term this system will continue to grow and expand 
And again, I think 35 to 45 million were some of the projections that I've seen. Um, total for next year projections that I have seen from analysts about 100 to 125 million dollars for 2022. I thought that was a bit low, figuring maybe 125 to 175 might be a little more realistic. We've certainly not been given guidance all the way out that far. When we get a new press release this quarter in the next three weeks, it'll be easier for us to project forward more and more. It becomes a process where you get the information this company's building and building and building. So we'll be able to determine where that's going to be over the course of the period of time. Every quarter that goes by, we get more information. We can then narrow down what our target projections are going to be. Two facilities with about $1.5 billion revenue potential. Again, it is not going to happen anytime soon. Two and a half, five, ten years down the road. $1.5 billion revenue projections. With a net income of five to seven and a half percent. All right. Now, mind you, also keep one other thing in mind. These, this potential $1.5 billion revenue projection was based on Bofello, the California operations, and some dispensary operations. They will continue to expand these dispensary operations. Maybe they even merge with another existing dispensary operation. Should they do that, the 1.5 blows out. And what happens is they have more capabilities of getting into some of these other areas to sell more revenue. Then they can go ahead and start planting more plants on these acreages. So the 1.5 billion over the course of say five to 10 years gets obliterated because they continue to expand. Nonetheless, off the 1.5 billion, their potential right now today with a five to seven and a half percent net income potentiality, you're looking at about 75 to 125 million in net earnings. From that two billion shares, you're looking at a potential earnings per share of 3.75 cents to 6.25 cents. Given that kind of EPS with a 50 to 100 times earnings potential, you're looking at the potentiality of about a buck 85 to 625. And that's a big range. A couple things. More and more dispensers are going to be uh, added on to the system. So again, the 1.5 is a nice starting point to kind of look at potentiality. As the, this company grows into that 1.5 billion, their rate of growth slows down in that section. All right, you've got Buffalo, they got 495 acres. And if they start adding 50% more, 50% more, 50% more year after year after year, what happens is that growth rate is exponential. So you start pushing 100 times future earnings potential. But as they get closer and closer to maximizing Bofello, we start to slow down that rate of growth, that 100 times. But again, they will be adding more and more and more dispensaries. Given that, it's a pretty wide range, but it should put things into perspective for you that there is a tremendous amount of growth opportunity with what they have right now. And they're going to continue to expand. Halo benefited. Halo last year, I think it was, uh, I want to say September, October, sold off some stock as well, went to the ATM, pushed the stock price down all the way almost to uh, two cents. Again, I had a whole bunch of orders in it too. I thought, why not? Um, because five to 10 years from now, this thing is going to be worth a lot more money. Not tomorrow. Not the end of August. Not the end of this year. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. And if you continue to focus on that process and ask the questions, are they hitting their goals? Then look at the bigger picture. 
okay, this year's goals, starting to check those boxes. And actually, I believe we're probably going to exceed or see them exceed the $70 million mark. So they're moving beyond that. They're going to continue to expand things like this, adding more dispensaries, um, acquiring different companies, this, that, and the other thing. This is going to be a continuum year after year after year. Given that, the stock's trading at $0.04 cents right now. You're looking at a, a stock that easily could exceed a dollar. Um, we saw a big spike. If you look at the spike that happened in February, all cannabis stocks that happened to it, nothing exceptional here. Uh, over the past couple, uh, since about June, I think they've been trying to raise some capital. We see what happened with the stock price. It slid back down. This should be a screaming buying opportunity. At the same time, I certainly understand that some people, I just had someone send me a, a DM or a message or tweet or whatever on Twitter. Someone got in at 50 cents. And I don't really remember that I actually responded, but one of my followers actually chimed in and said, buy more. I don't, there's something to be said. You bought in at five cents, it's now, or 50 cents, it's now trading below five cents. You could dollar cost average. You could, or you could uh, diversify into other stocks. There's a lot of opportunities, and every single individual is going to have a different risk parameter or risk tolerance, whatever, objectives, time frame, things like this. My personal time frame, many, many, many years. Warren Buffett's personal time frame, forever. That, he's, that was his, one of his favorite quotes. My favorite position is forever. This is my approach to looking at these companies. I'm not looking at the very shortest time period because I don't care about the sh very shortest time period. I'm looking at this as a long-term uh, ownership of a company. This is a company that will has a revenue potential that probably within five to 10 years will exceed two and a half billion. You know what they have right now? Sure. We can objectively sit there and say over the course of say five to 10 years, they could easily print 1.5 billion with what they've got, but they're going to continue to expand. How much more? Maybe they get another billion dollars worth of uh, potentiality right there. What will that do to the stock? It's just going to send it up. So if you're getting involved in this stock, you need to look at the absolute biggest picture. Um, all this up and down we've got going on right now. I, if it weren't for doing this article, I really would not have been focused on the actual stock price. I've been looking at it over the past couple of weeks and I put an order in to buy it two cents because I can see what potentiality is there. My name is D.H. Taylor. Just wanted to say thanks. Again, I, I, with this particular st stock, I get a lot of questions. If this is your first time stopping by for whatever reason, you stumbled on the, the, uh, my channel or whatever, there's an email button down below. And I send out this information on, on I try and get out about three or four videos up per week. Um, I'm also, uh, I've got the website, please, by all means, stop by there. There's a, an accompanying article that goes with this where I kind of break down everything in a more written area. Some people like watching videos. Some people like reading articles. Uh, tomorrow, actually, as soon as I get this thing uploaded, there's a gentleman by the name of Richard who uh, inherited some money from his father. And I'm going to put together a portfolio for this individual, kind of a little, uh, um, he's looked at my top picks. And I'm going to pick out maybe four or five other stocks for him and say, these are my recommendations based on this. Um, so that should be an interesting it, video. Probably put about five to seven different stocks in a kind of a portfolio so he can pick up with just a couple, sit back. His objective, 25 years. And I, I salute him all the way home. That's an excellent opportunity right there. Again, thanks for stopping by. See you in the next video.